How's everyone doing today? Alhamdulillah. We start with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all praise due to Him. We ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send the bandit salutation on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So last week we were busy with Surah Al Nasr. And then Malla uh, Khalil came in. Malla Khalil makes me nervous. <laughs> so we had to, we had to end. Um, but just uh, very quickly, I will give a summary of the surah, the certain things that I wanted to mention as well. And then we're doing surah Lahab today. Inshallah. So, so, someone say something? Is there a question? No? Okay, so surah to Nasr, as I mentioned, um, it was in the last portion of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa it indicated victory. Um, there was one particular Sahaba, I think it's Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that he was very young at the time, and Sayyidina Umar uh, would bring him to, to certain gatherings of the seniors. So some of the seniors say, it's like a youngster, right? like a, still a lighty, what's he doing here? So he said, no, this youngster uh, is very well informed and has knowledge, and this is how Sayyidina Umar would honor those with knowledge. So you would ask him in front of the, you would ask the companions firstly, you know, what do they understand of this particular surah? So they would say that the surah indicates victory. The surah shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting us that, you know, victory of Makkah, our homeland, we're getting it back. And then uh, you would ask uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, what does this mean? And he would say that this is an indication and a sign of the leaving or the departing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Umar said, this is exactly what I understand. So what the senior companions didn't even have insight into a youngster um, at a very young age had this particular insight. So this, the surah was an indication that the life of Rasulullah was now coming to an end. And he has achieved um, his life of je- objective. It was to, to spread the word of Islam and subhanAllah at the time of the Hajjatul Wada. So going back a few years, four or five years, um, at the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Everyone remembers the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. I don't have to go into too much details of, of the stories that we mentioned before. At the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, there were 1,400. The Fatah Makkah, just about three years later, four years later, there were 10,000. That's in a short time that they, they made da'wah. The Hajjatul Wada, which is the following year, there were 120,000. Can you imagine that? Four to five years from a small group of 1,400 to 120,000 people having accepted Islam. And then they didn't stay there and keep it to themselves. They moved. And now every tip of the world, there's Muslims. So you can imagine what they achieved. To be able to be on the tip of Africa. I mean, we Muslims. No, you can recite Surah Fatiha, you can recite Quran, you can go to China and you can stand in one of the massages and they're going to lead Salah, you're going to hear the exact same Quran. Try to speak to him, not going to know what he's saying. <laughs> but when we recite Quran, we recite the same thing. Um, how was Islam brought to Cape Town? And there were certain individuals that were were taken out of where they were because they were busy with Islam and giving down and we thought we'll bring you to the tip of Africa we'll leave you here these people came in chains but we are able to recite Quran today because one of those individuals was able to rewrite the Quran from memory three times subhanallah imagine that they put you on an island in the middle of nowhere you know this was the legacy that we come from People, they held them to the deen. They held them to the deen. And wherever they were sent, you can send me to Mars for like, hey, I got my deen, I got my Quran, I got my Sunnah. And if anyone's going to be there, then I'm going to promote it to them as well. So this is the legacy that, 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 that we stand on. These are, the, on the, on the, these are the shoulders of the giants that we stand on. Subhanallah. 
and the baton is handed to us the baton is handed to us so when I spoke about Surah Qut Kafirun I spoke about identity the importance of having identity our youth are currently going through identity crisis not in only our youth though our seniors are sometimes also going through identity crisis I'm dealing with a couple now shame they, they, they're splitting the guy is 40 years old he was married already and he's divorced and he got married to a younger <coughs> wife but the objective of getting married to the younger wife was so that he can live a young life again but the wife's intention was to live be a, a very homely matured woman coming into the home what does my husband need doing everything for him and he's like, no man, we go to the jewel, no man, we do this, no man, we do that, no man, we do this. And unfortunately, that's not what she went in for. There's a 40-year-old, and I asked ask him, why, what happened? So, now I got married, unfortunately, I had a child at a wedlock, I got married at 17, and I didn't live my youth. At 40, he wants to live his youth now. Seriously, man. Identity crisis, you know. So, my, my, we realign ourselves, you know, with our purpose, with our objective, you know. I'm Abdullah, I'm one of the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reconnect to my creator, reconnect to my deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for this deen inshaAllah. So Rasulullah came and he achieved his victory. That's the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, the victory came. You're going to see the people entering into the deen in crowds, in flocks. But when you see victory, whether it be in any form, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ Show the greatness of your Lord. It is Allah that has granted you this. Always remain humble. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ And seek His forgiveness. Because they might be through that journey that you attain arrogance. Through that journey that you believe it was all about you. إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابَ And when you turn back, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our forgiving, will definitely forgive you. So this is the beauty of the, the surah. It is an indication of the end of the life of Rasulullah and he has completed his mission. Rasulullah completed his mission. He was sent with the objective and he completed his mission. And so likewise, sometimes we need to do introspection and just ask, you know, why have I been sent to this dunya? What is my purpose? And everyone has a different purpose. Find your purpose and fulfill your purpose, you know, do to the best of your ability. Be of benefit to someone, you know. It's not about only acquiring wealth and living your best life in terms of, you know, what I've acquired, but using what you have, the resources that Allah subhanahu has given you and using it to be of benefit to others. There's nothing more fulfilling than that, you know. And everyone has their own ability. If you get good in this particular thing, this field, then see how you can be of benefit in that field. I'm not saying give your life up, but whilst you're doing what you need to do to earn halal living, you know, also say, okay, but you know, Allah's given me the skill, let me see how I can be of benefit to someone else. Allah subhanahu has given me wealth. Let me see how I can be of benefit to others via my wealth. You know, but live with purpose. Live with objective. Find purpose in your life. Huh? This is important. This is very, very important. Okay. Surah Lahab. A very um, intense surah. Um, also Makiya. Makiya meaning that it was revealed before the, the Hijrah. Okay, so the word Lahab means a flame. It is the name of the person, yes. Surah Masad. Okay, so um, certain surahs have more than one name. Uh, this is one of it. So Masad uh, is the last uh, word in the surah. Uh, if the surah can be named Masad, it can also be named Lahab. Surah Masad, uh, palm fiber, if you have it as Surah Masad, then it's palm fiber. If you have Lahab, then the flame. Surah Fatiha, for example, is known as Ummul Kitab. Um, it has like th- Ashifa, it has like three or four names, up to seven names. So over here, 
he was the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So it was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then he had his, his um, grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib had sons. Um, one of his sons was Abu Talib. When Abdul Muttalib passed on, Abu Talib was the one that supported him until he passed on in the 10th year. Um, when his uncle and his, his wife Khadija عنا, passed on and then Abdul Muttalib also had another son was Abu Lahab his, his name was actually Abdul Uzza Abdul Uzza Uzza was one of the, the idols so he was the slave of the idol that was his name Abdul Uzza and then they called him Abu Lahab Lahab means like like a flame, something that's reddish. So he had he had he was he was of high status. He was extremely wealthy, and he had very beautiful features. So he had like like a red like a redness on his on his cheeks on his face, and because of that, <coughs> if I could say beauty that he had, they gave him the nickname Abu Lahab. Abu means father, but when it's associated to something, then it means Someone who possesses this. So like Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira wasn't the, the name of the Sahaba. Abu Huraira was uh, a, the one associated to kittens. Abu Huraira would, would have like this wine sleeve and he would have like a cat inside him. So he was known as Abu Huraira. So Abu Lahab was a nickname of Abu Uzza. But it's because he had this, this, this red complexion. Um, so he was very wealthy, high status, very handsome. And he had a... a, a a wife that was of high status as well. Her name was Urwa. And she was known as Um Um Jamil. Um the mother of Jamil. Jamil is beauty. So listen, look at this couple. High status. Both beautiful. They had everything. But as the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could not handle the message that was coming. Because it means that maybe I have to lose of my status or I have to whatever the case may be, but he couldn't handle it. So Rasulullah Wasallam went on to Mount Safa and he calls out to everybody and he says to them, you know, if I tell you there's an army behind this um, mountain, would you believe me? And everyone says, yes, you are Alameen, you are Siddiq. This is before his prophethood is announced. But everyone knows him to be Alameen, the most a trustworthy, a Siddiq, the most truthful. That's how they know Rasulullah. It's just we believe it. If I tell you this, what do you, yes. So he says to them and he gives them a warning, you know, that I've been, been given a message that we can't continue on the lifestyle that we're living. We can't continue worshipping idols. We need to worship the one true God. And at that point already, this is right in the beginning. And before that point, Abu Lahab, Abu Uzza loved his nephew Rasulullah. But at that point, the enmity started. And he says, Tabban lak, tabban lak, may you be destroyed. Alihada jama'atana, did you call me out for this? Did you call us out for this? And he walks away. And from that, as long as Rasulullah was giving da'wah, he was Rasulullah's enemy. He was someone that made difficulty for Rasulullah. Rasulullah's son passes on. And Abu Lahab is the neighbor of Rasulullah. And when he hears about this, now that's his nephew. Abu Lahab's nephew. And he, he shouts out in excitement, happy and dancing. Patara Muhammad. Muhammad doesn't have any lineage to, to carry on his name. Patara Muhammad, Patara Muhammad. This is how, you know, intense Abu Lahab was. Whatever wealth he had, he would use it against Rasulullah. And then his wife did a very similar thing. She would put thorns and stuff in the path of Rasulullah so that he would be injured whilst walking out of his door and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now speaks about them specifically. No suar, no surahs are specifically dedicated to one of the enemies of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was Rasulullah's uncle, close relative, and he was his enemy. And now Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala deals with it in a very, very straightforward manner. So the surah then says, "Tabat, tabat to be, to be destroyed." 
Yada. The word yada is actually yadani. What's yadun? A hand. Yadani? Two hands, okay? So it's the two hands of Abi Lahab. Abi Lahab is his name. That's his name, Abi Lahab. Okay? Abu, Abun means father, the father of the flame. But as I said, if, you, if the, the, the word Abu, it means you, you have that quality. Okay? So Tabbat Yada. May the hands, the two hands of Abu Lahab, Abi Lahab, which is his name, be destroyed, watab, and it will most definitely be destroyed. So it's emphasized. It's like a dua, and then it's emphasized that it definitely will be done. So there's, there's more than one occasion that Abu Lahab would mention this, and he, that, that is the one time, and then in another time he would mention this word tab as well. Regarding this deen, Tabban li hada deen. Man, this, this religion of yours is nonsense, man. May it be destroyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds as if responding to both times that you used it. He has a response. May you be destroyed and you will be destroyed. Now, quickly, um, the word yada, it's yadani, but the noon is dropped. I don't know if you did the ruling, but why? Did any of you do it? No? So when a dual word or when a jam mudakkar salim word, what is jam mudakkar salim? Okay, what is the sign? The sign? Sorry? Jam mudakkar salim jam. Sorry? What's the sign? Oh, yeta. <laughs> Yes, una. Una, it's a jam word. Una and an ina. When a dual word, ani, or jam mudakkar salim, una or ina, is mudaf. What is mudaf? <laughs> I'm scared to ask you now. Because what is mudaf? Sorry? Yes, mudaf and mudaf. Mudaf in lay. So something of something. The book. Of the man, Kitabur Rajul, the house of the lady, Baytul Marati, something of something. When a word is mudaf, if it's dual, it's ani, or it is jam, mudakkar, salim, una, or ina, then the noon is dropped. I see some of you agree, so you've heard that before? Yes. I'm not talking, uh, you know, something weird here, talking French. Yes. Okay. When a word, that is ani dual or it is masculine sound masculine plural meaning it's una or it's ina when this word is moved off meaning it's something of something else here yeah? the hands of you got it the hands of when it's una or ani or ina then the noon will be dropped when it's moved off to something else you got that you sure explain it to me When it's mudaf. Lovely. Everyone got that? Everyone not? Okay, good. So this word, yadani, it's mudaf to the next word. That's why the noon is dropped. Now, another nice question. The word tabat. It's supposed to be tab, but it's tabat. It's in a feminine form. Why? What about hands? Hey? Mashallah, mashallah, lovely. Min al jism. So anything of the body parts that are due, it will be deemed as feminine. So your hands, your eyes, your ears, um, your nose has two nostrils, <laughs> the nostrils. But whatever is due would be deemed as feminine. So the hands, because it's um, due, even when you refer to it as a single or double, but because there is due, uh, the verb in relation to it is feminine. Good, got the question? Okay. That clear? Okay, so the, 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 the surah starts out very, very strong. You are the enemy of Rasulullah. Now, this is the response. May you be destroyed and you're going to be destroyed. 
Now there's a, a beautiful hadith, hadith Qudsi. What is hadith Qudsi? Sorry? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking via Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Very powerful hadith. I'm just going to give you the first part of it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man aada li waliyan. Man aada li waliyan. Whoever harms a friend of mine. Faqad aadhan tuhu bil harb. I wage war against that person. Can you imagine this? You, if you ha- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If a friend of mine is harmed, then I wage war against him. This, the greatest of friends was Rasulullah. And he, Abu Lahab was trying to harm him. And this is how Allah responded. You're going to be destroyed, my brother. Now, imagine becoming a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have a bodyguard. You have Allah as your bodyguard. The rest of the hadith tells you how to become a friend of Allah. But you'll leave that for another time. <laughs> Ma aghna. That's ma is negative. Ma aghna. There's a question. Yes. So remember, it's it's when you when you have a do when you have a verb, then you're going to have a doer. So. Um, fa'ala rajulu fa'ala to do arrajulu the man did did something um, fataha uh, alwaladu the boy opened something we use the female version of it fa'alat fatimatu fatima she did something Fat. now I'm going to use fa'alat I'm going to use darabat so when it's referring to the what, what is the doer the hands is the thing that's doing Tabat, may that the hands be destroyed. So that's the fine. Tabat, it's it's actually three letters. It's tababa, and then it's then it's put together. Shadda, tabba, ta and tubas. Tababa, and then it's put together. Tabba, and then because it's feminine, tabat. That's okay. Ma aghna Aghna to be To avail To It's almost like To assist So will not This ma negative Ma aghna Will not assist Will not avail Anhu In relation to him This word an Means Regarding To I'm going to say In relation Ma aghna anhu Him In relation to him What will not assist him Mal Maluhu, mal. What is mal? Wealth. Maluhu. His wealth. His wealth is not going to help him. He's super rich. This wealth is not going to help him against Allah, because he, he was uh, trying to harm Rasulullah Sallam. Wa ma and not <coughs> or no ma that which kasaba he earned. So whatever. He had of wealth, whatever status, whatever popularity, whatever else he had, what he was earning and what he was getting, that is not going to help him in any way when he needs to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that niyama. Sa yasla. So, so the scene is added to the word yasla. The scene means soon. It's an abbreviation for the word sofa. So sofa means soon. When the word is abbreviated, then the scene is put there. Okay? And it is for mus taqbal, for future reference. So soon something's going to happen. When the scene is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just say yasla or sa. But. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds the seed, it means something is going to happen soon to this person. Sayasla, he will soon be entered. Naran, where? Into the fire. And look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mocks him. What is his name? 
Abu Lahab. What does Lahab mean? Flame. Why was he called Abu Lahab? Because of his redness. Now listen to what Allah says. Soon he will be entered into the fire that the possessor of our flames. I was mocking him. You got time to mock my prophet. Your name, I'll drag you into the to, to the to I'll use your name as a mock against you. Also, another thing over here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't use his real name, which is Abdul Uzza. To give no reference to you being a slave of this crazy thing. This idol. No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses his nickname. But do you notice the how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mocks him? The same name is being used in a negative sense here. You're going to be entered into the, the fire which is the possessor of, of the flame. Okay, just very quickly looking into the grammar of this. Sa, so it's the seen, which is, means soon, mustaqbal. Um, yasla, yasla is a verb. Um, who is the doer over there? Who's the doer? When we have a verb, we're always looking for the doer. How do you look for the, how do you look for a, a doer? <laughs> I hear Eli, Eli, and Oli. <laughs> Which one is it? Okay, let's use Eli or Eli, whatever you want to say. Eli. Uh, Eli. The E means, look at the end of the word. So you're going to look for, for example, fa'ala, fa'alna, fa'alta, fa'altum. Do you see anything there? No. no. Then you're going to look to the left. Looking for something for, to the left. What are you looking for the, to the left? For something that's in halat raf. Is there anything in halat raf? No. no. And then? Inside. Okay. So what is inside? Huwa. Damir, Mustatir, the Damir that is hidden and this Hua. Who is it? Who is speaking? Who is it speaking about? Abu Lahab. He will be entered now on into the into the fire. That Allah. Okay. Wam ra'atu. That makes reference to his wife as well. Wam ra'atuhu and his wife. His wife was Urwa, and her nickname was Um Jamil. She was the mother of beauty. She was super beautiful. This was a couple of high status, but the status didn't help them over here. The status is not helping them over here. What she would do is, um, she would, like I said, take thorns and stuff and put it in front of Rasulullah. Anything to harm him, she would do that. So Allah Subhanahu says, وَمْرَأَتُهُ And his wife, on the day of Qiyamah, what is she going to do? She's going to be Hamalata, the carrier. Hamalata. She's going to be the carrier of Al Hatabi. Hatab is wood. So for fire to burn, you need you need wood. And she's going to be like she went to carry stuff in front of Rasulullah. Now she's going to carry it in the other way. She's going to be carrying wood to fuel the fire of Abu Lahab, and she's going to have to watch him burn. That's because she facilitated him wrong in this dunya. Now something very important. Yo, very quickly. Um, our partners in this dunya, we need to choose very wisely. Those that are married, sorry. <laughs> you chose already, it's a done deal. Those that are not married, you can still choose. That's a joke. Um, but, but very importantly, your partner can make or break you. Look at, at, at the example that I just made earlier now. She could have given in to her husband, and their life would have become become a jewel but she didn't want that she didn't get married for that but this person was you know no man come we go come we do come we do and there's so many couples that end up you know in rehab and so on and so forth because the one was on and invited the other one on that just try man just do it once and they try and they hooked you know and then you can have another partner that is leading you to gender I mean, another part of that way, Shafu Fajir, come my love, let's make salah together. Allahu Akbar, yo, how romantic is that? <laughs> you can get that. Choices we make is very important. 
You can have a couple that's that this this partner is taking you to Johanna. And you can get a partner that's leading you to the gender. Allah grant us, you know, partners that are gonna be the coolest of our eyes. Beautiful dua Rabbana Oh Lord, Habalana grant us mean as wajina spouses Vadriatina and children, Kurrata Ayun that is the coolest of our eyes. Make that dua all the time. Make if you're married, make the dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might you know make the, the, the spouse the coolness of your eyes. And if you're not married, Allah may Allah grant you a partner that's going to be the coolest of your eyes. But this is so important. Oh Allah, I've seen it over and over and over again that the partner just drags the next one in the wrong direction and both of them uh, find themselves in difficult, difficult circumstances. So she will be, because of what she did in this dunya, she's going to be carrying the wood to fuel his fire um, that's going to burn him. Fi jidiha, and then in her neck, or fi can also be translated as on her neck over here. Fi jidiha, in her neck, or on her neck, even as around her neck, there will be habalun, there will be a rope, min of masadin palm fiber. Now she had a, a very beautiful um, chain with something very expensive on it. And uh, she would take that, she would firstly boast about her, you know, having wealth, but she would take that and she would want to sell it, bought it as a means of, of using it against Rasulullah So here you had something precious. Now in return now, that's going to be turned into palm fiber that is going to be basically strangling you. You're going to be hanging from this, this palm fiber. So the, the, the something we learn from this is the resources that we use, you use it for good. It's going to be a means of good for you in the year after. And if you're using your resources for bad, then know that resources are going to come back to you on the day of Qiyamah and it's going to come in a very ugly form. There's hadith that speaks about the one that was, was his, he warded his wealth, he was stingy. Wealth and wealth and wealth and wealth and wealth and wealth and no, it's mine, you know. Can't give anybody a sin. It will come as a serpent to the death of Yama, And it will continuously be attacking him. I'm your wealth that you are you ordered now. Come. Allah protect us. The resources that we have, use it in a positive way, will come in a positive way to the death of the Use it in a negative way, it's going to come in a negative way. I, I mentioned the hadith last week that Iqra al Quran, read the Quran, because the Quran is going to come as in intercessor for you on the Qiyamah. This Qur'an, you use it positively, it's going to be for you. Al-Qur'an hujjatan lak, aw hujjatan alayk. The Qur'an is going to be a proof for you, it's going to speak for you, or it's going to speak against you. Or it's going to speak against you. So when the Qur'an speak for us, you know, the Qur'an say, you know, oh Allah, this person read me, this person tried to practice on me, this person was learning me. This person must go to Jannah. Or, this person abandoned me. This person didn't read me. This person forgot about me. The Quran can say one of the two things. When the Quran speak positively for us, on the day of Qiyamah, we'll now go and break, and then I have one period, and I'll be back again, and we'll do Surah. Surah Ikhlas. Kulwa, inshallah. Jazakallah khairu akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah.